Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. Hi. Hi. Today we're going to be making sense of life through five quotes from movies that we love. I picked three this time that were, were seminal films from my youth that had a lasting impact on me. So I'm going to start off with a classic line from Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, when they're in the mines of Moria and Frodo's feeling down about Gollum and things in general. And he's saying to Gandalf, I wish none of this had happened. And Gandalf responds with, So do all who live to see such times, but that is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. And that is an encouraging thought. It's just, it's just a lot of juicy wisdom there. You don't really have control over where you're born into, your circumstances, how life happens around you. All you can do is give a certain amount of time on this earth, and the only thing you have control over is what are you going to do with that? It's up to you, what you make of your life. There's no use dwelling on things you wish that you had or things that you don't have. Yeah. You know, he has a bigger beard. <laughs> so, so I mean, I couldn't have been chosen. Then you start focusing on maybe vilifying that person because they have a bigger beard than right. you do. <laughs> Instead of just kind of focusing on, you know what? He may have a bigger beard and that's great for him, but I have really supple. Yes, supple skin. Cheek skin. And then you could maybe become like a skin model. Yeah. Sometimes you see pictures where you only need to see the bottom half of someone's face. Yeah. But it'd be tougher if you had the beard covered. If you had the beard, yeah. Yeah. So it's actually a detriment having this in some Isn't situations. Such situations. Yeah. Don't be like thinking about, well, if I had ABC, it would be easier. If it's not easier for you, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's not easier. Accept yeah. it. It's not going to get any easier if you're complaining about it. Just handle it. Use the resources you have. That's it. Move on with your life. So for me, oh, my sense. one is from inside out. Mm. Joy, Sadness, and Bing Bong are on the train of thought. They're trying to make their way back to headquarters. Yeah. And then Joy bumps into the facts and opinion box and they're all over the floor <laughs> and she's trying to put them back in. And she's like, oh no, these facts and opinions look so similar. How will I tell the difference? Hey, there's the train. <laughs> These facts and opinions look so similar. Ah, don't worry about it. it. Happens all the time. That is a shot. Yes, that is a. That Whoever is a, wrote that script. Mmm, that's good. That stings right at the heart of how the world is right now. Yeah. It feels like such a dumpster fire. Yeah. It's because facts and opinions just seem the same to so many people or just to everyone at different times. Sometimes you can be more discerning. I know for me, other times I can be more discerning. And then if you're tired, other times you're just like, you want to treat your opinions as facts. It's just more comforting. It's easier. It's more enjoyable. Yeah. You know, so it's not even something that like only some people do. Like, yeah. I think we all fall into it. It's a very tempting thing to just, yeah, just mix them all up and just exactly. kind of interact that way. A lot of things that we discuss are opinion. Most of the truths are based on our point of view. And that's okay. Just mm -hmm. because it's an opinion does not invalidate it. Yeah. But I find it problematic and unfortunate fortunate and mm -hmm. it removes the opportunity for learning and openness where people start being dogmatic about their opinion mm -hmm. and deciding their opinion matters more than someone else's to the degree that if you don't agree with that opinion yeah. there's something wrong with you you have to ostracize mm -hmm. you therefore you do not belong to this group anymore right. people also don't want to believe that truths are so subjective and is there even any kind of thing exactly they are 100 on percent yeah. subjective like mm -hmm. depending on where you are i think that's why people's problems with religion because a lot of people need to believe that their religion is the truth and not just accept that it's all basically the same wisdom it doesn't really matter which one you follow as long as you're getting the benefit from the teachings then you'll live a good life but because a lot of people feel the need to be right and to teach the other people that they're wrong that's when you come into conflict what you think is a hard truth tomorrow may be completely different for me personally i like being that malleable in mm -hmm. terms of my thought process and my views it's one only agenda episode one of harry potter the scene where Harry is obsessed at looking at the mirror of Eris head. Dumbledore notices that he's just spending all day looking at it. Dumbledore, trying to help Harry break out of this fixation, says to him, The happiest man on earth would look into the mirror and see only himself exactly as he is. If you are completely content with exactly your reality, nothing else will show up. What I take from that is, first of all, you know, the, the whole thing about the mirror driving people crazy because they see the thing that they think would make them happy, but it's an illusion. They never actually can have it. It's showing you all these external things or things you wished had been different in your life that you can't do anything about. And it's about accepting your reality mm -hmm. and finding a way to find happiness with however you are. 
Yeah, 100%. Oh my god. I just thought about the hours I spent trying to figure out which vase I'm gonna put in the entrance. There's already a vase, by the way, on our console table, and I liked it, and then I hated it. And then I decided I'm overhauling the whole thing. <laughs> it has caused me severe distress. If you were in front of the mirror, there would just be a room full there, of vases. There would be vases, potentially candles that I would never light because <laughs> they're at the entrance, and I don't really spend just literally for the aesthetic. That has caused me so much grief, just way too much time online. Be happy that you have an entrance, mm -hmm. that you have a vase. Mm -hmm. It may not be the best vase, but it's there, it's cute. And it's your vase. And it's and it's, it's my vase. Yeah. And I have a story behind that mm -hmm. vase mm -hmm. that's actually really fun. Yeah. Yet I am focusing every single day, I'm trapped, I'm trapped. I always say, I feel like things would be fine if I just figured out what vase. <laughs> and I'd say, and then it'd be and the next be thing else. that yeah. you have to fix or exactly. change. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Maudie. This is the scene where Maudie goes back to the aunt that she lived with before moving out. Yeah. The aunt has been seeing Maudie on TV. She's become this artist now. She says to her, I watched you on the TV and it dawned on me. <laughs> Why am I whipping out the British accent? <laughs> Good to see you, Ida. I watched you on the TV. Did you? What do you think? You're the only one in our family who ended up happy. Well, yeah, but it did. So Maddie has physical challenges. She doesn't necessarily seem to have anything by way of an education or career prospects. Mm -hmm. And they just have this idea that you are just someone who needs to be taken care of. That's it. The brother is like, I'm going to give the aunt a a stipend <laughs> to take care of you because you can't take care of yourself. They have no faith in this in her whatsoever. It's so hard to have a family, people that are supposed to love you and motivate you, encourage you and believe in you no matter what, knock you down every single day. It's so hard to bring yourself out of that and find success. And the thing I like about her as well is that she doesn't actually go out and find success in that way of like, I'm going to make it, I'm going to show them that mm -hmm. I can do it. Success in that like superficial materialist way. She's just like, I want a life for myself. I just want independence. This being taken care of, this being looked at as someone who has absolutely no hope, I'm not really liking that. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go out there and get on the struggle bus mm -hmm. and figure things out on my own. I'm quite happy to do that. Without that support, she did it on her own. So no matter your circumstances, who you have in your life, at the end of the day, it is always just up to you. There's no, my family didn't give me that. There's no, my family hated me and that traumatized me. Yeah, it's true that your family screwed you over. Marty was screwed over in so mm -hmm. many ways. The worst brother mm -hmm. ever. And yet she managed to work things out and find her own happiness. Mm -hmm. You were completely responsible for where you are in your life right now. No matter who did what to you, no matter your circumstances, where you are right now, if you're unhappy, you are entirely responsible as an adult. You have the agency and you have the responsibility if you want out of it to make it happen. Going back yeah. to the mirror, a very sad thing in the Harry Potter, people could say, oh, well, yeah, she became a renowned artist, but her whole life she just lived in like a two room shack in the middle of nowhere. A lot of people struggle to either identify the thing that would really be their passion, or if they know what it is, they don't pursue it because it might mean that they live in a small house. But then in the end, then those that do, a lot of times they're willing to sacrifice say maybe a comfier home to be happy. That's what the aunt doesn't understand and that's what a lot of people I think miss. Then they resent the fact that other people were willing to carve their own path, which is just something that they couldn't understand. How, how would you even figure that out? The brother goes to Maudie's place and says, you still live in this tiny house. Yeah. Maybe you should let me help you manage mm -hmm. your finances instead yeah. of your husband clearly isn't doing a good job. He's the kind of person who doesn't understand that people find happiness in different ways and it's okay. For him, I don't understand why you wouldn't capitalize on this yeah. thing. Yeah. Because money is the, the root of all happiness yeah. Yeah. and not being an artist, mm -hmm. not being able to paint. People look at her and think, oh, Oh, poor yeah. her. Meanwhile, hmm. she's always been doing this thing that gives her happiness. She's always had that peace. Because it's unconventional, people don't understand how you how can you be happy? You're doing things differently from other people. You're not following the rules. Uh, the last one for me is from the first Star Wars, episode one. Anakin has been freed from slavery. He wishes to become a Jedi, so Qui-Gon is willing to take him back to train him. And they're having a conversation about committing to this life path. And Qui-Gon says to Anakin, Training to become a Jedi is not an easy challenge. And even if you succeed, it's a hard life. They all kind of relate back to the previous one, to the Monty thing of any kind of path that you dedicate yourself to that is not the conventional one. Yeah, you're dreaming of all the 
amazing things you've heard that Jedi's lives are, but it's not all adventure. It takes a lot of discipline. It's very hard. There's a lot of compromises, a lot of sacrifices that other people couldn't do or aren't willing to do. It reminds me of the artist's life, for example, or any kind of life, again, that is not a normally well-treaded path. So there's not really any rubric on how to go about living this life. So even if you do end up making a living, say, uh, off your art or off that your passion, it's still going to be tough. What I take from that is there's nothing that comes easy. Yeah. You could have the dream to be a bookkeeper. Let's say you're getting hired as a bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. You're working for someone. Maybe you're not working from home. So then you have to get up get dressed and then take an Uber bus drive there to the job and then the other employees suck. But you love being a bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. This is your dream. You yeah. finally got your dream job, yeah. but you still have to deal with all of these other discomforts. Mm -hmm. Your dream is always worth fighting for, but don't be thinking that it comes easy yeah. or you don't have to put in the work. Yeah. A lot of times people will be looking at these movie stars and yeah. they just think, oh my gosh, I wish I were a musician. Mm -hmm. I wish people loved me like that. Yeah. I was wish like that. It's just this fantasy, yeah. this idea of what kind of lifestyle that is, but you don't see the waking up at four in the morning, mm -hmm. sleeping for one hour every yeah. single day for months on end mm -hmm. or not seeing your family or yeah. you can't go to a grocery store without someone wanting an autograph. Yeah. And if you don't, you are the devil yeah. incarnate <laughs> yeah. because you just wanted to eat. Mm -hmm. and not spend the day signing autographs. Just let me live. Anakin represents anyone who has this naive dream of anything without realizing what the actual reality of all getting it, it is. having it happen and living it actually means. Make sure that you're dreaming of things yeah. and you want it because you actually want it, yeah. not because you think if it's a dream that it's going to come easy. Yeah, it's romanticized to be a well-known writer, but the actual writers that are well-known know how much you have to just bleed and you just stare at a blank page and you're just in pain. I suppose you'll know whether or not it really is your dream or the thing that you really want to if you can't handle the bleeding. Or you can handle the bleeding better than than not attempting the yeah. thing. That's five quotes from movies, five movies we, we loved. loved. What do you guys think? Are there other quotes from those movies that you also enjoy? Are there other quotes from other movies that you enjoy? Let us know yeah. down below and share your thoughts on our thoughts. Until next time, thanks for Bye. watching. It's a wrap. Peace.